UFL 5, August 30th, and one half of your main event, fighting for that uh, Bantamweight title, Vince Morales. Vince, how we doing, man? Doing good, man. Just finished up a training session right now. I'm chilling for the rest of the day. And this is a, a very interesting event. I actually talked to Cejudo yesterday, and I've been talking to Scott, and it's it's unique. There's teams involved. There's points involved. So how do you feel about the overall style, the overall uh, format of this event? I think as far as like a spectator, I think it's it's really enticing. Um, it's it's definitely something something different for the MMA scene right now, and uh, hopefully it stands out in that in that facet as well. Um, I think it's just a, a, a step in the right direction in terms of uh, trying to separate yourself from the pack. So I'm excited to see what UFL is going to continue to do like this. And like I said, your main event going for a, a bantamweight title against Hunter Azure. Both of you guys, UFC experience, like. Before I ask you about the matchup, what are your thoughts about the fight itself and the high stakes with a belt and leading the helm for your team? Uh, I'm kind of honored to be considered, well, I consider myself anyways, like the anchor for the team. So uh, that's leaving us, I mean, if, if it's two and two, which uh, hopefully it's just a clean sweep across the board, but whatever. Uh, yeah, just to be the anchor and the one to, to bring it home, like uh, feels right for me. I think it, it settles settles in my mindset properly. Um yeah, dude, it's it's a good fight. It's a uh, the, the whole event in Team Vegas, Team Phoenix is, is dope. The, my last fight here in Vegas, like, actually felt like a hometown fight. So it's cool that now I'm leaving to represent Vegas. Like, I'm with it. And winning this belt, like, I don't know. I talk to a lot of regional fighters, a lot of UFC guys all over the place. And from what I understand, a belt is kind of the same meaning no matter where you are. It's just you're a champion. Or do you feel that way, or is it like? No nah, man, I need a UFC belt. This isn't enough. Or is this like a very big honor to win? Uh, at, at a little bit of both. Like at the same time that it is an honor, it's also like I want the UFC belt. Know what I mean? So, so like that. That's that's the most prestigious in our in our MMA world. So, yeah, this one it's a for me is a step in the right direction as well. So, yeah, uh, um, and it's going up against somebody who's a former UFC vet as well, and a tough fight in and of itself. These are the kind of fights I like. I think uh, they, they bring the best out of me. So yeah, all the, all that going in there, the, the belt's a bonus. I don't care if it was 10 rounds, one long one hour round or a 10 second fight. Like I'm going in there to beat this dude though. And I mean, just tell me about Hunter and the matchup. Like I said, two very high level opponents, both from the UFC, both having a lot of success out of the UFC. How do you feel about the fight? I think we match up pretty well. I think he's a, He's coming off of a big win himself, so I, I'm sure he's going to be feeling himself, which I think goes into my sort of skill set. So, um, yeah, I just plan to go out there. I, I feel like I'm a vet now. I've really I've sharpened up a lot of things since partying with the UFC, and um, I'm only getting better, and I, I just want to go out there and show that until I'm back where where I believe I belong. I mean, tell me about your thoughts about, I guess, like, for lack of better words, the current state of MMA, if you will, just because – you and Hunter going for, you know, I don't know if you want to call it a regional belt or what, extremely high level. We just had last week a Cage Fury. Chris Dawkins, Stefan Chukwi battled it out in the main event, both just out of the UFC. So my point is the circuit, the scene all around is growing. You're getting better and better fights everywhere. How do you feel about that? Because, you know, like five years ago, man, it was just UFC. Yeah, it's crazy. It's uh, so I I rent out my a couple rooms in my house to like up and coming fighters. One of them being a uh, Cody Steele, who's on the Contender Series coming up. Um, it's it. We were just talking about it yesterday that like the difference that five years ago, six years ago was um, in MMA to now. And whereas, just like you were saying, there's so many high level fights outside of the UFC, and so many so many guys coming into the UFC, um, or even are in the UFC already and like having a high level fight, like you see major holes in the game. So it's, uh, it's, I think uh, us as fighters, we've got to recognize like the, the potential um, entertainment value that is really brought on the UFC and that sort of promotion and like how we can navigate those waters to make the most out of it. Otherwise we're going to be fighting these tough ass dudes on the regional scene for pennies compared. So um, seeing that now retrospectively, uh, I'm trying to share that knowledge with people so we can hopefully get some more eyes on some of the regional stuff because it is really high level and for the people going into the UFC treat it as such and it, it's yeah it's man the UFC is like 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 I was saying some of the guys coming in off, like off the contender series are are murderers and they're only like yeah. seven fights in which is crazy and this is kind of I guess a two-part question because obviously the goal is to make it back to the UFC so my first part here is does a win here 
ideally in your eyes, puts you back there. And then two, if not for whatever reason, or if you don't get the call as soon as you want it, do you defend the belt that you win? Um, let's see. So firstly, uh, yeah, I think, it, I think it puts me in that in the right direction, which I already think I'm, I'm in, I think, uh, four fights, four pretty good performances against solid opponents. Uh, I think that that should have left me first in line for something short notice if it comes up, which, uh, which great, um, with this one, I'm hoping, uh, now we're talking about rectifying my five losses in the UFC. So I'm like, okay, cool. I've had five out of there. I've had five tough opponents and I've done my thing all five times. So Hopefully it's looked at as such. If not, um, th- it's back to work for me and business as usual, where I'm just trying to prove myself going forward. And if that means defending this belt over and over and I get the right opponents in front of me that are, that are trying to challenge me and, and look good to fight, then sign me up. I just want to fight. Dude. I don't know how much longer, uh, like this MMA world, it's tiny for our lifespan. So I just want to keep getting in as many scraps as I can until I can't. And then, like, upon exit, like, I know the UFC says what? Like, you know, go win a couple, and uh, we'll get you back in there. But, and, you know, yeah. you're, you come to mind with four in a row right now, looking at five. Kyle Dawkins has four in a row, three of which are title fights, and still no call. So, like, mm-hmm. you being in, in this experience, what do you think they're really looking for to get people back in? I don't know. Sometimes I really, I wonder if they're even looking at getting people back in. I, I Like, um, I, I kind of think about this. Um, and as them running a business, they've already put, I, I wonder if they look at it like they've already put money and time in, into us, uh, in, in their production and in their show. So I'm, I imagine like, we've got to do something pretty spectacular outside for them to be like, okay, you know what? Like, I think, I think it's time. So I don't know. I'm, I'm just kind of bouncing around ideas and like, I try not to get too hung up on it though, because I do have work in front of me that I really want to focus on and, and get out there and beat these people. Um, but yeah, these kind of thoughts come in passing and I'm not super sure what it's going to take. I'm down for whatever it is though. Tell me a little bit about coach Frank Mir. Cause like I said, I talked to Henry mm-hmm. the other day and I kind of got a sense of that camp. So what's it like working with Frank? How like hands-on is he? He's a man, dude. He's came through syndicate a few times uh, o- over the years and, and, and every time he's got in there, he's always had some real good knowledge on like some veteran things and some, and some just techniques that like, you might miss this little detail here, but it's a game changing one. And and it's just kind of paramount with Frank. And every time I talk to him, like it's, he's just like a, he's an hourglass of information and just tip it. It gets going and it just kind of doesn't stop. And it's constantly all these things that are real beneficial. So um, I'm so he's, he's like team captain, essentially. Uh, I really like Frank. I think we've got along over the years. Um, yeah, hope to go out there and represent well for him. All right, if big if, if Henry Cejudo mm-hmm. and Frank Mir were the same size, who wins in a fight? Oh man, I wonder, huh? I feel, so I'm biased because I'm one of the little guys, right? Like sure. so, anytime, anytime it comes down to like a skill for skill fight, I'm like, okay, well, proportionally, I beat the shit out of you. So like, uh, I always think that for the little guys, but um, man, who really knows? Um, I'd say just because of the way I think, I gotta lean. I gotta lean with the king of dweebs and go with this pseudo. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, maybe it's the case if Frank loses the weight, Henry wins. But if Henry gains the weight, Frank wins. I don't know. We'll never know. Just having fun. That, see that? That's thinking too. That's thinking too. You never know, man. But I, something I want to ask you about uh, someone else I talked to recently. You might know him. His name is Ricky Simone, a cousin of yours, running a podcast with you. Tell me about yeah, this yeah. podcast, man. You're in the setup right now, having a lot of success. What's this like? Yeah, so it's called Just Cause, uh, just me and Ricky uh, chatting things up. We talk a lot of MMA stuff and and really just catching up with each other and like a lot of fight mindset stuff too. Because I think uh, since we're we're family and we both do it, we we have a interesting perspective that we can kind of bounce off each other and uh, and people tend to enjoy that a little bit. So yeah, uh, yeah, we we've got to we got to get to recording some more episodes. I'm hoping you can make it back this way. Um, this so the podcast setup is in my house and. Uh, yeah, when he whenever he stays, we just hop in here and do it. We we do it over the over like through Zoom and stuff every sure. now and then too. But uh, um, feels better in person. So it's better to we'll riff. It's better to vibe. You know, hundred percent, dude. Um, and so a podcast type of question I'll ask you, and then I'll get you out of here in a couple of minutes. Mm-hmm. Everyone's wondering about this Marab and Sean O'Malley matchup. I figured a top level bantamweight like yourself, a great person to ask. How do you see this fight going? 
dude marab's my one of my main training partners yeah, uh exactly we, like we, you guys know each we, other <laughs> yeah we scrap scrap i was just i just had a wrestling day with him and we did all of the wrestling class and then he went and did a shark tank with coach wood where he's hitting the pads slamming the dummy working ground and pound picking the dummy up slamming it again back on the pads he's just going back and forth and he's it's, it's a full-on sprint the whole time and the while i'm watching him i'm just like dude once like once he gets that 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 presence on o'malley like he's going to cook him. It's going to be like the end of third round. I, I just see O'Malley like kind of like a little bewildered. Like, and that's one thing that Marab really has on people is like, you don't really know it. No, don't really know what it's like to navigate the waters with Marab until you get in there with him. And by that point, it, it's rough. If you're not a training partner, like if, if you're a training partner, cool. Okay. Next time I'll get you, we'll work harder. But uh, dude, the first time is the worst time with Marab. So I just imagine he's going to drown him. They call him the machine for a reason. And that's what every fighter I've talked to has been saying. They're like, yeah, I mean, Sean could clip him early. It's MMA. But if Marab really gets his game plan going, Sean's just going to drown. And I I agree there. Um, yeah. Did you see this cut that's going viral of his? What's up with that? Oh, bro, we had a nightmare of a day yesterday sparring. So uh, uh, it was uh, there was Marab in the gym. There was Brendan Marat in the gym, who's also in the UFC. He's got a fight coming up. And myself in the gym. And it's sparring day. So we schedule our cage rounds. So Marat gets in there has a big issue with his nose because it gets all bloody marab's in there next he's in there uh gets his eye gets his eye cut up taking a shot i think i think he just hit a hip bone or something something weird and then uh and then i get in there and i get a palm or i get a knuckles one of the punches didn't turn over and it splits my nose so there was blood all over that cage it was just a crazy day yesterday but um ain't no thing dude it it, it is what it is like it's it's training camp we don't it's not going to matter really. If if we get bloody in the fight, it's just going to make us all that much more like amped up to go. So I think uh, the public tends to make a bigger deal about it than we do. So we're not worried. Did, did you see what Dana said last night after Contender Series? That was rough though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, just like, dude, come on. You know Marab. Like that's so Marab. Like, oh dude, it's totally Marab. And then I'm sitting there and then he's like, our guys are so unbelievably dumb. And I'm like, oh, Marab. <laughs> it's all right. It's, it, I think anybody else, Dana would have been genuinely mad, but it's Marab. I think he was kind of having fun with it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think he's just like, Jesus Christ. It's so For funny. sure, man. But Vince, man, uh, again, I appreciate the time and a big fight coming up. Anything you'd like to say to all your fans? A lot of people watching this one, a lot of people ready for you to get back to the octagon. Yeah, hell yeah. I, I can see that. I get like a lot of people chiming into my YouTube and all that stuff, just like wishing me good luck, which is which is sick because uh I'm I'm pumped for this fight. I'm documenting the rest of the rest of the fight camp, which is two weeks. So um if anybody wants to check that out, definitely head on over to my YouTube channel. Um and uh yeah, I just hope a bunch of people tune in because I'm trying to make something special happen. Like I was saying earlier, I think uh it, in order to get back, it's it's hard to get in, it's harder to stay in, it's even harder to get back. So yeah, I mean, I'm I'm down for the work, and I'm only getting better. And I plan to go out there and just kind of do do my thing. And I'm I'm ready for a fight, fight. So I think that's what we're gonna get. Um, also, another thing, if you look on Vendetta.com, coming in like the next two or three days, I'm gonna have some shirts up, um, Team Vegas style. So it's gonna be like the Raiders logo, but it's got the Guy Fox V for Vendetta mask. They're gonna be Word. sick. They're gonna be sick. So I'm putting those up on there. Um, that was Vendetta.com. Be able to get those here in a few days and get ready all get all geared up for the fight. So. Awesome. Yeah, link I just your... hope everybody tunes in. I'm ready for a scrap. Oh, hell yeah, man. UFL 5, August 30th. I will link all your stuff below. 5-0 and o outside the UFC. Mick, Sean, Dana, come on. It's going to be hard Let's to go, deny baby. you any further. Uh -huh. Vince Morales, thank you so much, man. Kick some ass, and uh, when you're champion, we'll talk again, yeah? Uh, cheers, bro. I appreciate it. Sounds good.